Introduction Mercury is a silver white metal, liquid at room temperature, odorless and easily absorbed by body. Industrial uses of mercury such as electrical equipment, medical appliances, barometers and paper manufacturing. This year, 2022, marks 25 years since a tragedy in 8 June 1997 took place. There was an American professor of chemistry, a chemist named Karen Waterhan, who died from dimethyl mercury poisoning. While working in laboratory, she was using a complete set of PPE, and while doing the experiment, a few drops of dimethyl mercury slipped from the pipette she was holding and landed on her clothes. She then developed stomach problems, having trouble walking and speaking clearly for five months, and was in coma a few weeks before her death. This tragedy told us that the mercury is very toxic. Thus, we brought to you an interview session with a mercury expert. Mr. Yang Mulia, TS Raja Muhammad Shamsuri, is the current General Manager Technical at Upstream Downstream Process and Services Sunderan Berhad, UDPS. UDPS Sunderan Berhad specializes in the provision of engineering services in the oil and gas sector. UDPS business also include equipment trading and heavy machinery rental services, maintenance and engineering services, laboratory services, mercury-related training, and consultancy services. So uh, our first question would be, what is uh, the best practice of handling the mercury in industry? If you may, uh, can you tell us about it more, uh, Tuan Raja? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. So in industry oil and gas, uh, first of all, the best practice, uh, I can say the people who are work in environment that exposed to the mercury must fit to work. That's the first thing. Fit to work means uh, we have to do some uh, analysis from urine or from blood to measure the mercury inside our body. And from that, we have some BEI, we call Biological Exposure Index. If that personnel, uh, the results show above the BEI, 35 microgram. So we will ask that personnel to uh, avoid from these activities, okay? And before we do the activities or handling the mercury, contaminated to the industry, we have to do protection work. Protection work means the surrounding of the working environment need to be protected to avoid the cross-contamination from the mercury. For example, we lay down the canvas, we erected the visqueen plastic, and also we cut on the area with the barricade to avoid unauthorized personnel to enter the working area. And then also we erect the personnel deconstruction like a shower. If uh, anybody contaminated with the mercury, we will decon, we will using the chemical decon, right? And also we put some drums, uh, put the contaminated PPE once the activity completed. All right, so uh, can we move on to the next question, sir? Sure, sure. All right. I have a question. So how will the risk change following the implementation of Malaysia Health and Safety Regulation to the workers? When we follow the implementation of Malaysia Health and Safety Regulation, how the risk of mercury can change? Right. If we study about safety, there are terms that we call the hierarchy control. So following the legal requirement on the hierarchy of control, the mercury hazards also apply the same method. So we follow the first elimination. So we eliminate the hazard. And if we can remove the mercury hazard, so we don't want to facing with the mercury hazard. But industry, uh, I can say we cannot uh, waive the hazard because the hazard is there to follow the, the second step. So the second step is the substitution. We need to replace the hazard with which hazard is lesser, which hazard is much safer. So the second step is substitution. But if not, we need also to face the macro hazard. So go to the third step is engineering controls. So here comes the some technology. If you know why we put MRU, mercury removal unit, in the platform or downstream to avoid the cross contamination, this mercury to the worker, to the equipment. Uh, that's a really 
a great explanation, I believe. Can we uh, ask another one question, sir? Okay, go on for the next question. Uh, I will ask the next question. Uh, the, the, the previous explanation was about the workers inside the plant. What about the public uh, have, have risk uh, due to power plant mercury emission today? Uh, the another mercury is we call the organic mercury. The organic mercury usually happen to the public. The public are not intervened in the activities that, con that contaminate and have the mercury. But the public can expose to the mercury by organic mercury. How it happen from the seafood, the big fish, the lobster, the shells, and these are the seafood that potentially have the mercury. Why it happen? Yeah, the mercury comes from the deep sea and those the marine also from the sea contaminate it, the plankton, eat the small fish that contaminated with the mercury and the people eat the fish and also the people get the contamination with the mercury. So they, uh, they caught the fish and the fish contaminated with the mercury and they eat the fish. What happened? It becomes the one tragedy. Everybody get TNS, Central Nervous System Damage. That becomes Parkinson, whatever, and the mutant to the baby. For info, eh, uh, I just get some some news in the paper that the Asian bloc, including Malaysia, become the second largest uh, area that have high contaminated the mercury because of the industry development. All right, Isma, do you have any question for our uh, guest today? Ah uh, yes. Uh, one last question here, yeah, Tuan. Uh, based on your experience, have you handled the emergency situation due to mercury exposure? From my experience, uh, I have conducted in offshore for some field, which is during the activity vessel cleaning or breaking containment. So what happened? Uh, during the activities, there are some spill of mercury. We mercury bits, the small, small bits. Eh? During the breaking containment, when they try to, when they try crack open the flange, so the mercury spill from the from the flange, then we contain the spill. So when it happened, they call us to come. So our team uh, stand by. Eh? During the activity that they involve on mercury should be the hazmat team will stand by. So we stand by near to the location and then we summon by them, we go, all right? We go for that and we do the uh, spill collection, okay? So we barricade the area to ensure that nobody enter the uh, mercury area, the activity area. And then we open up the mercury spill kit that we bring together, yeah? So uh, depends on the size of the spill. If the size is very big, so we use the cotton rag, we spray the, the, the recall chemical first and we collect the, with the cotton rag or the chemical, chemical band and put in the drums. Once the job completed, we again do some mapping to ensure no left mercury and then once confirmed, so we can declare the area is safe. Very simple. Uh, thank you, uh, Tuan Raja. We uh, actually have learned many uh, many knowledge, more knowledge today uh, regarding uh, mercury. Um, so I, I would say that uh, it's really important uh, for us to get to know. All right. Uh, with, with that, uh, I think uh, we have uh, come to an end of our interview. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Raja, for your time and consideration to participate in the interview session today. Uh, we are really uh, thankful that uh, you accept our invitation. While conducting this assignment, we achieved a substantial advantage from it, which is we got to learn firsthand about how mercury to be handled in upstream and downstream industry. The most difficult challenge we face while carrying out this assignment is we need to find the convenient time to conduct an interview due to interviewee's busy schedule. There an improvement we need to improve for the future assignment such as do a detailed research above the title before conducting an assignment so we can understand more when the when interviewee explain about it. During the interview we really enjoy the session while building a professional network with an expert of Mercury.